From towering mountains to vast oceans. Intricate waterways to majestic peaks. The ancient geological movements and river in ceaseless flow have sculpted the land, where the people of Dongguan have lived for generations. This land, rich in resources and flavors, tells a timeless story of nature's bounty. Around 1.40 a.m. on the 15th, Typhoon Mangkut hit Baggao, Cagayan in northern Luzon, Philippines, causing great damage to buildings in its path. In September, Dongguan faces the most severe typhoon in nearly a decade. A tropical storm is rapidly approaching from 800 kilometers away. Mr. Ren now faces a critical decision. At 1 a.m., in Dongguan's largest prawn pond, Mr. Ren decides to haul in the nets early. The king prawns, also known as ghost prawns, are easiest to catch during their late night feeding time, they'll be rushed to the market. Hu Men Seafood Market operates through the night. Freshly caught seafood is delivered here immediately. This season two types are in high demand. The big head croaker known locally as Huang Pi Tao, boasts tender flesh. Under high heat, the skin turns crispy, enhancing the fish's delicate and juicy texture. As for the king prawns, a hint of scallion and ginger is enough to bring out their flavor. The soft, bouncy prawn meat bursts with fresh, savory taste. These sought-after seafood varieties thrive in a unique marine habitat. The prawn pond is the lifeline for Mr. Ren's family. A single natural disaster could wipe out their entire investment. Despite his seemingly calm demeanor, Mr. Ren bears immense pressure inside. The biggest worry is the strong tides. If the tide rushes in we're in trouble. It's really concerning. Dongguan is often battered by fierce storms. Yet the local prawn farmers still choose to build their ponds right by the sea. The reason lies in the expansive estuary of the Pearl River, where freshwater mingles with seawater, creating a unique habitat for distinctive marine life.
to adapt to the fluctuating salinity. These brackish water creatures produce more free amino acids, which are the essence of umami flavor. Among them, the sand shrimp also known as ma xia, for the sesame-like spots on its back, commands the highest market price. Before the typhoon hits, Mr. Ren sets out on his second harvest in the pre-dawn hours. The yield is quite satisfying. His catch got quickly snapped up by eager restaurants. Using rose liqueur as fuel, the shrimps are quickly stir-fried. Of course, what seaside diners love the most, is the pure, sweet flavor of the shrimps. A quick blanch in boiling water, turns the shrimp shells a light pink just as the proteins start to set. The shells, as delicate as a cicada's wings, require precise timing for the perfect texture. There's no need for any dipping sauce. The meat is naturally sweet and has a jelly-like bounce. For Mr. Ren. Beyond the harvest, the real blessing is that the typhoon didn't cause significant damage to his pond. After a long day and night, the farmers finally sit down to their first meal. That's the joy of life actually when you put your heart into something. It might be tough, but there's still joy in it. That's just how it is. Local environments shape the tastes of their inhabitants. Dongguan's diverse geography offers a wealth of unique ingredients deeply influencing the culinary preferences of its residents. In Dongguan's villages and towns, four or five-story self-built homes are common. Rooms near the top are sometimes rented out, while the first floor usually serves as the owner's main living area. Every month, the Ye siblings return to their parents' home for a family meal, and one dish is never absent from their table. Goose, in Lingnan cuisine holds an undisputed place of honor. It's a main course for important festivals and significant family events. In Guangdong, at least 170 million geese find their way onto local dining tables each year.
One, the Ye family's eldest son selects the geese. He owns a goose farm in Darlingshan town. Darlingshan is a typical hilly region with a humid and hot climate. Its dense waterways create an ideal habitat for geese. While Chaoshan favors braised geese, Guangzhou loves roast ones. Dongguan boasts a more diverse tradition of goose dishes. Plum sauce effectively balances the richness adding a refreshing sweet and sour flavor to the meat. Once cooked, the whole goose is quickly cooled. The resulting white cut goose is smooth, tender and delicately flavored making it perfect for summer. However, the most popular dish remains the roast goose. This Cantonese culinary classic known for its complexity usually requires the expertise of professional chefs. However, in Darlingshan town, this intricate dish can be easily made at home. The sauce is the soul of this dish. Each family has their own recipe, whence comes from his grandfather. To master this intricate task, chefs in Darlingshan town need the best tool. which is a unique bell-shaped cover, locally referred to as the Goose Tower. This curved device efficiently concentrates heat, and the durable local clay ensures stable, lasting thermal radiation. The locally sourced lychee would known for its hardness provides a steady and long-lasting heat source. The roasting process takes about 40 minutes, when's parents are busy preparing dinner. As the dishes are served, the goose on the rooftop turns golden brown releasing a tantalizing aroma. The sauce, simmering over high heat, repeatedly releases its fragrance and absorbs the goose fat. As the dishes finishing touch, Darlingshan roast goose boasts a glossy, chewy skin, and tender, juicy meat. The savory sauce, with a hint of sweetness, permeates the meat, enhancing its flavor. This is the distinct taste of Dongguan. For thousands of years, people in Guangdong have created a myriad of unique goose dishes. The residents of Darlingshan town can achieve delicious results with the simplest methods. Their confidence comes from a deep understanding of the ingredients. 
and a commitment to preserving ancient culinary traditions. Forty kilometers away, along the western coast of Dongguan, a culinary delight is coming into its prime. Banana blossoms, the stamens and buds of the banana, are considered a delicacy by the people of Machong. These peeled blossoms are as crisp as spring bamboo shoots and as smooth as okra. Briefly blanched to remove bitterness. They are then added to crispy pork and egg patties, enhancing the complexity of flavors and textures like vibrant notes making a symphony for the palate. Is it sweet? Tasty. 41-year-old Zhong Li Ji owns this banana plantation. In the midst of the summer harvest, the fields are filled with children on their school break. Freshly cut bananas must be swiftly stored to continue ripening. Zhong shuttles between storage and fields. While his children find their own fun. Got it. Hold still wait let it grip a bit more. I caught a red clawed crab. Red clawed crabs are small freshwater crabs. Highly sensitive to water quality, they've recently reappeared in the water channels of the banana groves. Grandma Huang Donkai has a special method to enhance their unique flavor. She mixes the crabs with roasted rice to speed up the fermentation process. The result is the red clawed crab paste. The fermentation takes about a week. This paste has a strong tangy aroma. But when stir-fried with vegetables, it becomes incredibly fragrant and has a delightfully crisp texture. Grandma always saves some crabs to make the kids' favorite red clawed crab congee. Bananas have a growth cycle of about 300 days. Crop rotation keeps Zhong Li Ji busy all year round. Freshly harvested bananas aren't ready to eat yet. But they are already a favorite among Ma Chong chefs. Green bananas are starchy, 
not sweet at all, but once cooked, they soften up and have a texture similar to taro. Machong chefs come up with various pairings for them. Stewed with seaweed and brown sugar. The tender green bananas are enveloped in a burst of umami. Whimsical combination is signature feature of Machang's desserts. Bananas are an integral part of life here. Records of banana cultivation date back over 800 years. By the 1950s, bananas had become Ma Chang's economic backbone. And by the 1990s, most major banana traders in China were from Ma Chong. From picking to enjoying it takes a week of waiting. Starch decreases rapidly while sugar content soars. The thin-skinned machong bananas are high in sugar with a delicate and soft flesh. For Zhong's family, the banana grove has always meant joy and delicious flavors. The golden era of banana trade is long gone. Now Zhong is one of the few remaining banana farmers in Machong. Even though times have changed, the bananas from this seaside grove interwoven with canals remain as delightful as ever. Transitioning from mountains and hills to plains. The terrain of Dongguan slopes gradually from east to west, reaching its lowest point along the Pearl River. 3,000 years ago, it was a group of islands. Over time, sediment buildup and frequent human activities connected the islands, forming a unique Pearl River Delta water town landscape. At 8 p.m., the old opera stage entertains the villagers, right on schedule. As do the night food stalls. These bustling spots highlight the region's finest delicacies. Depending on diners' preferences a single fish is expertly divided. Two millimeter fish slices are a perfect match for boiling congee.
No need for open flame boiling water does the trick. Cover and let it sit for 20 minutes. The fish will be perfectly cooked tender and juicy. Dong Guan chefs excel in cooking fish, drawing not only from their rich natural resources, but also from their culinary wisdom. Take the dace fish a common catch here for example. The best part is the one cent thick meat from its belly. Pressure is applied from heavy to light, to gradually spread out the meat. After hundreds of rolls, the fish becomes a paper thin sheet, less than a millimeter thick. Ms. Lee has spent over 40 years perfecting this technique. Fish acts as the wrapper with pork as the filling. In Dong Guan, it's called fish dumplings. Simmer on low heat for just 5 minutes. The perfectly chewy outer skin and juicy filling. Blend harmoniously creating a memorable aftertaste. As night falls once again. Familiar sounds and aromas return right on cue to greet the evening. Dressed up like a boss feeling absolutely fantastic. With all kinds of delicious food in front of me. The local produce here has profoundly shaped the lives and tastes of its inhabitants. No matter where they go. Some culinary preferences and lifestyles remain unchanged. Early in the morning, Feng Yin receives a package. Filled with cooking ingredients sent by her mother. Dried tangerine peel for soup, dried oysters. Red fermented bean curd and glutinous rice flour. Zhao Feng Yin is a true native of Dongguan. She moved to Beijing a year ago. From south to north, these two cities are more than 2,000 kilometers apart. Walking through the dry, chilly streets of the capital, Feng Yin feels more distant from home than ever. Despite her best efforts to adapt to life in Beijing, her stomach remains stubbornly unyielding. Her mother understands her heart better than anyone. Using early harvest rice to make silky smooth rice rolls, Feng Yin prepares her favorite dish. Being used to having rice rolls for breakfast, I had to learn to make them myself. This winter solstice, Feng Yin decides to invite her northern friends 
to experience the unique flavors of Dong Guan cuisine. While it's a chilling minus 2 degrees in Beijing. Dong Guan basks in warmth over 23 degrees. Unlike in the north, the winter solstice here is the most important festival of the year. Zhao Fengyin hails from Shirlong Town in northern Dongguan, a place that has always been a key junction through history. Though its role as a transportation hub has never changed, some local delicacies remain exclusive to this town. Take this dish for instance. It's so intricate that few can name all its ingredients. Add to it 30 degree rice wine, fermented rice. Pig liver, fried eggs. Even Huangjiu. And fresh milk. This seemingly wild combination of flavors is brought together by a single spice. Ginger. A typical pot needs 3 kilograms of ginger. Its bold flavor is unfamiliar even to many locals. If I had to recommend just one dish from Shirlong, it would undoubtedly be this savory ginger broth. Zhao Fengyin decided to make this dish for this dinner gathering, offering her friends a memorable culinary adventure. Mom? Smash the ginger before boiling it and then... Heat the pan, add oil, and stir-fry the ginger. Fengyin first turned to her experienced mom for help. Step by step, she successfully made a simplified savory ginger broth. To be safe she also prepared one of her signature dishes. Red fermented bean curd sent by her mom is key in Lingnan cuisine. Almost done. The savory and tender goose meat is enveloped in the rich velvety potatoes. The slow simmered soup blends the flavor of the chicken with the refreshing zest of tangerine peel and the savory dried oysters into a harmonious mix. Compared to the previous generation young people in China today, feel less connected to their hometowns and the land. Yet, no matter how far they travel longing for home, lingers in certain tastes deepening over time. It's an adventure, after all. The ginger broth, despite the effort didn't win everyone's heart. Perhaps it's like life itself, some stories are meant to be shared. While others are best savored quietly on your own.
The winter solstice has just passed, for Lo Banching and his wife. It's time to harvest the crops they planted eight months ago. Dig carefully. It's huge so don't damage it. Dig around it. How about you give it a try? This one's really big. The soil around it is quite loose. The arrowroot, also known as Han O, thrives in subtropical mountain regions, with small quantities found in southern China. Its texture is similar to water chestnuts. When paired with meat, it adds a subtle sweetness and a fragrant aroma to the broth. Preparing fresh arrowroot is a laborious task. That requires the help of neighbors. For the children it's playtime. For the elderly it's a nostalgic journey back to their childhood. Arrowroot is rich in plant fibers. Physical grinding makes its texture finer. Luo Banching ensures that none of the filtered fibers go to waste. With glutinous flour and seasonings the fibers are steamed. For a full hour. Their distinct texture is retained. While the coarse taste might not be considered a delicacy today, it is of particular significance to the elderly. Beyond the fibers lies the filtered arrowroot starch, which has solidified after a morning of settling. With the help of the warm winter sun, the north wind quickly carries away the remaining moisture. For the elderly, arrowroot holds a special place in their hearts. This South American plant was introduced to China 60 years ago, and became a crucial staple during times of scarcity. In an era of limited resources, its unique texture and flavor left an indelible impression on a generation. When mixed with boiling water, arrowroot starch becomes thick and creamy, akin to lotus root powder. Low bunching adds a few extra eggs, hoping to make it more appealing to the children. Today, even in Dongguan, arrowroot starch is rarely used, found only in a few mountain villages. Over generations the significance of food has subtly shifted. Flavors and local produce have gradually evolved over the years. Yet land and sea remain unchanged. Five thousand years ago, the first settlers made their home in the Pearl River Delta, finding a resource-rich haven by the sea.
It's the fourth day of Zhang Jiqiang's journey at sea. For hours, five hours the water's been calm for five hours. 70% of the annual catch occurs in the first three months of lunar year. Every spring and summer, large schools of squid migrate to the southwestern coastal waters of Dongguan to spawn. Squid, attracted to strong lights linger beneath them. Making nighttime ideal for fishing. Marine fishing is highly unpredictable. Today's catch isn't particularly bountiful. Zhang Jiqiang comes from a long line of fishermen, historically known as the Tonka people, who once lived year-round on boats offshore. The confined spaces of fishing boats only allows simple cooking. But the freshness of catch makes up for it. Freshly brought ashore the catch ignites the chef's creativity. The reef stonefish commonly found in the South China Sea has venomous dorsal fins. However, skilled Dongguan chefs know how to handle it. Ensuring the tender and delicious meat is perfectly served. The dragon grouper, or giant grouper, can weigh up to 100 kilograms. And has skin over 5 centimeters thick. The translucent skin of the dragon grouper is rich in collagen, and can withstand prolonged high-temperature cooking. Enhanced with local yellow bean paste, its rich and tender texture attracts food enthusiasts from all over the East. Seventy years ago, they gradually settled ashore in Xinhuan, Humen. Today, Fewer than 500 people in Xinhuan still fish for a living. However, if you're looking for the authentic flavors of the South China Sea, this is the place to be. Dried fish is perfect for making soups. Like Zhang Jiqiang's family, Mr. Ha and his ancestors were also once boat dwellers. Despite having settled on land for 40 years, his seafaring days have given him unique insights into seafood cooking. The Tonka dried seafood typically retains a bit of moisture to achieve a more complex flavor profile. These dried delicacies boast the rich aroma from dehydration, while preserving the fresh, firm texture of seafood. With 30 years of culinary experience, Mr. Ha excels in traditional Hu Men dishes. The local cream crabs here are sweet and succulent. Paired with eggs, minced meat and aromatic basil.
These four ingredients come together to make Humen cakes. After shifting his focus to life on land, Mr. Ha found new growth through interactions in the kitchen. The high heat crisps the edges, and the bottom of the dish creating a rich, savory aroma. That simple boat cooking could never achieve. Although life at sea is now a thing of the past, its influence endures. The abundant flavors continue to inspire new culinary traditions. Zhang Jiqiang and his family still sail on the sea. 30 years after his ancestors settled ashore. He determined to follow in their footsteps, as a professional fisherman, seeking the tastes of yesteryear on the vast ocean. The sea remains unchanged, nurturing generations of Dongguan people silently and generously. Mr. Ren takes a short break. As his pond preps for 12 million shrimp larvae next year ahead. The banana grove has kicked off another harvest. Mr. Zhong plans to teach his children banana farming. The unique produce nurtured by this land tells the story of changing fortunes and the passage of time. Flavors of land and sea mark the path we've traveled and guide us toward the future. <laughs>